When the Canada Summer Games are finished, the people of Thunder Bay will be left with a legacy of some $10 million worth of new athletic facilities and equipment. A new 400-meter Chevron track for track and field has been installed at Fort William Stadium. New tennis courts and playing fields have been built around the city. But the highlight is this building behind me, the Canada Games Complex, which will be the venue for the three aquatic sports of swimming, diving, and water polo. The complex features one of the biggest pools in Canada. It's 77 meters long with two movable bulkheads. The diving tank features both springboard and tower equipment. Included in the building are squash and racquetball courts to serve these growing sports, and special workout and fitness testing facilities. When the games are finished, the Canada Games Complex will be a multi-purpose, people-oriented structure, offering many different uses to the citizens of Thunder Bay. While Jim, Susan, and Marlene Graham are doing their thing on the water, Dad is making a major contribution on the shore with the design of his new computer, which will be used in the water ski jumping competition. What we do actually is lay out a layout, like you see here, that is a scale model of the site, and on this piece of paper you see a picture of the jump, yeah, a very small of picture of the jump, and uh, a grid which has meters written all along it that tells you uh, in scale how far a jumper would jump. We sight on the jumper's landing from the shore, these are three meter stations along the shore, and we look along a sight line which we simulate with a string, up will be and the, from the three angles of sighting we can find out where the skier has landed. The, hopefully these strings would cross, and right at the crossing point would be the place where the skier has landed, and uh, we could just measure then, looking on the grid, how far the jump had been. What's the advantage of using the computer? Well, what the computer does is it uh, reads these angles in automatically, and it has all of this uh, information simulated exactly inside the computer, just as if you were doing it on the master board, and it just does the thing more quickly. You'll notice that this triangle that we have, theoretically these strings should cross exactly, but they usually don't, and the skier then is determined to have landed somewhere in that triangle, and you have to figure out the best place, and so the computer will figure that out much more quickly. You can do it by hand. Wes, I guess your family got you interested in the sport in the first place, and this system kind of came about as a result. Well, it's partly true, but you know, I water skied before my family did, so I think I got them interested, but because they were so keenly interested, I just kept right on with it, and being a computer type, uh, I was looking for some opportunity to use computers in, in the sport, and so I, uh, I suggested that we do this a couple of years ago, and we gave it a try, and it seems to have worked out. Peter Watts reports from the Medical Center at Confederation College. Dr. Jack Remus is one of the volunteer doctors who is in charge of the medical facility here for the Canada Games. Dr. Remus, any particular problems that these athletes uh, are running into at these competitions? Oh, I don't think any particular problems. What they're doing is they're arriving with injuries that they have because a lot of athletes now participate in sports all year round. So track and fielders, for example, will have their shin splints and they'll have their Achilles tendon problems, which they have all year round. Mind you, when you're entering into uh, something like the Canada Summer Games, they want to be in top-notch condition, so we, we treat them as soon as they come. We have complete medical services, and I, I think what you call paramedical services. Um, we have the emergency services at the hospital, that's your neurosurgical services, um, your major eye injury services. Now, of course, we hope not to have anything like that. If there's any of these serious injuries that occur on the field, of course, patients are taken uh, directly to a hospital. They're not brought to the polyclinic where you are uh, at the present time. It is a formidable job to feed some 3,000 athletes for games. The shopping list is absolutely incredible. 130 loaves of bread for breakfast one morning when the uh, cooks put on a breakfast of French toast. Up to 2,000 juices can be consumed in the main cafeteria. They usually get about 700 pints of milk and about 5,000 half pints, and that's a daily order, and another 800 oranges for breakfast. One cook who has come in as a volunteer all the way from Winnipeg to be a part of these games stayed up overnight cooking 50 hips of beef for a dinner for one group of athletes. There are about 30 full-time staff members that work in the kitchen here at the college, but they have added several chefs from a number of the downtown hotels for this two-week period, and they've brought in more than 100 volunteers to work in the area as well. 
The college is located on a very large area of land. It's a beautiful tract, and it has a river running through it, and there's lots of walkways for the athletes to go about as they relax from the rigors of athletic competition. Some of the rooms are a little crowded, but nobody seems to be complaining very much. The food is great, according to all reports, and there's no doubt that Mayor Charles Johnston and his staff have put together one of the best athletes' villages for any Canada Games.